Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about hearing aids for active lifestyles and tips for keeping your hearing aids safe and different styles that are most appropriate for physical activities. My name is Caitlin Whitson. I'm a doctor of audiology at the UNC Hearing and Communication Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I have been working with UNC for the last three years. I work in the clinic five days a week with patients. I fit adult hearing aids and run hearing tests. I also supervise students as they're training and learning on the job, so to speak. Um, I also serve as our clinic's uh, practice manager, excuse me, clinic manager. So I oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the clinic. So some background about the UNC Hearing and Communication Center. We have been in this location for about 20 years in our main clinic location, which is where I'm at right now. We're a nonprofit practice and we have seven doctors of audiology who work here. Most of them teach in the graduate program at UNC Chapel Hill. I am the only provider that works here in the office and I do not teach formally on campus. We serve as a training clinic for doctoral students going through the audiology program at UNC Chapel Hill. We work with all hearing aid manufacturers here, and we also run on an unbundled business model, which means our pricing structure is fee for service. So we have a lot of people who come to this area, either visiting family or they're new to the area and retiring. And we're really well set up to accommodate people who get their hearing aids from other places. In addition to fitting hearing aids and dispensing hearing aids, we offer other specialty testing like for vestibular or balance disorders and also for tinnitus. We now have three locations. Our main clinic is in that picture there off Farrington Road in Chapel Hill. I now see people at the Seymour Center on Monday afternoons, which is located in about North Chapel Hill. And Dr. Johnson, Patricia Johnson, my colleague, also sees people out at the Orange County Sportsplex in Hillsboro, North Carolina. But for appointments, you will call that number below and or email the email address that's there to schedule an appointment at any of those locations. I'm sorry, it looks like it got cut off a little bit. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay. So if you're watching this on YouTube, then you found us. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel while you're watching. If you're watching this right now, um, please take a moment to write down our Facebook URL so that you can find our YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube um, URL is a little bit long and difficult to write down, but if... Uh, Sorry, I'm letting people in as we speak in the waiting room. If you write down our Facebook URL, you'll find some videos that we've posted that link to our YouTube channel. And I post all my webinars that I do there so you can see all our previous videos. So May is Better Hearing and Speech Month, and the theme this year is connecting people. And in the month of May, we hope to raise awareness about people with difficulty communicating, whether it's speech-related or hearing-related. And we also want to raise awareness for what our providers do, so both audiologists and speech-language pathologists, and the role they play in habilitating or rehabilitating uh, communication difficulties. For today though, we're going to be talking about hearing aids and how they relate to living an active lifestyle. Or maybe you don't live a super active lifestyle, but it's really hot and humid here in North Carolina. And we're certainly coming into those months now. So we're gonna give an overview about hearing aids in general. We'll talk about some tips to prevent damage from moisture, because that's one of the biggest reasons that hearing aids need to go in for repair. We'll talk about what you can do at home to maintain your hearing aids, tips for improving the fit or the retention of hearing aids, and some other considerations, and then we'll wrap it all up at the end. So we'll start with just reviewing hearing aids. 
So there are lots of different styles and someone might pick a style because it's more appropriate for the severity of their hearing loss, or they might want something that's more aesthetically appealing. And the, the larger behind the ear hearing aids that you see in this picture, of course, generate more power. So they are going to be better for people with more severe hearing losses. Whereas we get smaller and smaller, they don't generate as much power, but they fit more snugly in the ear. So they're a little more discreet. Um, we work with all of the styles for daily wear at the UNC Hearing and Communication Center. And these are your traditional hearing aids that are either rechargeable or you change a battery every few days. The extended wear hearing aid, we do not work with anymore at the Hearing and Communication Center. So a behind the ear hearing aid refers to a hearing aid that the sound is coming out of the top and it travels down a tube that is usually attached to an ear mold. And so it has the microphones behind the ear, might have a battery compartment for a disposable battery or have a spot to stick on a charger that's rechargeable. So this is our most powerful style. The tube does have to be replaced every six months. And because we use a soft mold to attach it to the ear, this is the best style for children to wear. And what you'll typically, if you see a child with a hearing aid, this is what they'll be wearing, a BTE. There are two ways to attach a BTE to the ear, either with the standard tubing with an ear mold or a, what's called a slim tube with a dome. And for some people, these can be easier to clean than a Rick style or the style with the wire. So we might use a, a BTE with a slim tube. Um, other people just need more power and that's really what the large tube gives us. A right or RIC hearing aid or receiver in the canal style hearing aid is by far the what we fit the most at the UNC HCC. And that's because it's the most versatile style of hearing aid and it's got a really discreet profile. It can be fitted on a really mild hearing loss or it can be fitted on someone with a more severe hearing loss because you can change the power of the speaker by changing the wire, or you can have a little dome or an ear mold to help keep more sound in. And, or you might choose um, a dome versus an ear mold, not just for the sound and the power, but also for retention needs. So keeping the hearing aid on your ear more securely. So this hearing aid can really be fitted to a variety of different hearing losses and ears. An in-the-ear hearing aid or an ITE specifically is this larger style of hearing aid that the electronics are housed within the shell that's formed based on the impression from the ear canal. And so since it's one large piece, it can be easier to put in the ear for people who have limited dexterity. Other types of custom hearing aids are ITC, CIC, and IIC. And these are the smallest custom styles. These are more cosmetically appealing, of course, but there are some trade-offs, right? So they are less powerful. If you have a more severe hearing loss, these are not gonna get loud enough really to help you hear as well as you could be if you have an over the ear. They also use a very small battery. So that means the battery doesn't last very long. You have to change it more frequently. And because they're so tiny, there's only so much space for the electronics that fit inside. So there are fewer specialty features with these tiny hearing aids. So like there's likely no Bluetooth. There's not a rechargeable option. Usually there's no telecoil or the two hearing aids may not talk to each other when they're processing sound that's around you. <clears throat> so there's some different components of hearing aids that I want you to think about when we're thinking about protecting hearing aids from moisture, from dust, from damage, from an active lifestyle. So there's the place where the sound comes in and that's the microphones. 
And then there's the internal components that are processing the sound. And then there's the sound output. So the little dome that sits in the ear or the ear mold and the tubing. So how can we keep that well maintained while we're living an active lifestyle so that our hearing aids work well for us? So of course, the biggest thing we think about with hearing aids and an active lifestyle, we think about humidity from being outside and sweat. And these are the two biggest things that cause hearing aids to break down. So we're wearing a hearing aid on top of our ear. And if we sweat a lot, maybe we're outside on a run, it just tends to drip down, right? So now our microphones, the gaps between the casing and the buttons, these are places where sweat can get inside and over time it can build up and damage the internal components and this happens more often than you'd probably think. Now an in the ear hearing aid is protected from this sweat from dripping down, but inside the ear is still a warm and damp place so if you're really doing exercise or even just a day where it's 100 degrees in North Carolina it's gonna get exposed to some moisture even if it's tucked inside the ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what exactly happens when hearing aids get wet? Well, you might notice that the devices randomly start changing programs on you or the volume starts changing randomly. So something's malfunctioning with the button. The hearing aids might sound weak or too soft or they have a muffled sound quality to them. Or they might cut in and out, so we call that intermittent. It could be making a static noise. You might hear a static noise, and, but not hear any speech with the hearing aids. Or it could be, just be completely dead and there's no sound at all. So what can you do about it? If that happens, you wanna bring it in to our office or to your audiologist's office if we are not your audiology clinic. Um, some Parts can be changed. And so the receiver or the piece for a Rick style hearing aid that sits down in the ear, that can be changed. Many manufacturers have the mic cover is removable. So we could change that and vacuum the microphones. Sometimes we can change the buttons. Some manufacturers don't allow us to change the buttons. Um, we can open up the hearing aid and clear out any visible debris that we can get to. We also will vacuum dry the entire hearing aid. And this picture right here is some equipment that we have in our hearing aid lab where it has this wand. It looks like she's injecting the hearing aid, but she's actually vacuuming out um, part of it. And this allows us to get into the small tiny holes of the hearing aid to suck out debris or liquid. And then this capsule here, we put the hearing aid in it and it pressurizes and sucks out any debris. So we can run that for a few cycles to help keep the hearing aid dry. In many cases, unfortunately, if there's been kind of severe moisture exposure, usually we have to send the hearing aid into the manufacturer. And if it's an out of warranty hearing aid, that can get pretty costly pretty quickly. So rather than reacting to moisture damage, we really want to prevent it. So some tips for preventing prevention. If you're out on a run or you're doing exercise or even just playing golf, if it's a hot day after you're done with exercise, we want to wipe down, sanitize and dry the hearing aids. And that'll help avoid both moisture and bacteria buildup. So you can use alcohol wipes, dry tissues like a Kleenex or um, a microfiber cloth. And a UV light dryer works really well for both sanitizing and drying. With the alcohol wipes, I do wanna note that you really don't wanna overuse these on your hearing aids because they can start to wear down the hearing aid casing over time. So some steps you can take to prevent the moisture damage is you can use some protective covers and ear gear makes a really good protective cover for hearing aids. And I'll um, show you that in just a second, what those look like. Um, you wanna, do wanna wash those after they get used so the um, bacteria doesn't start to grow on them. Um, remove visible 
physical debris or wax if you see any on the outside of the hearing aid. So with your little brush or with a tissue and use a dryer or a desiccant right after your exercise. And if you decide, you know what, actually I'm gonna take out my hearing aids cause it, I just don't wanna expose them to the humid air like this or to sweat, make sure you store them in a cool dry place and that it's a safe place. So not in a pocket where it can accidentally go through the washing machine or fall out if you're on a run. So this is what I was talking about, the ear gear. And this is, um, there's a website, gear4ears.com that you can go to. And they have lots of different colors and styles of essentially little sleeves that slip over a behind the ear hearing aid. And they have it without cords so, or with a cord. So the cord you would clip to the back of your shirt so that if one accidentally fell off, it would still be holding on to something and you wouldn't lose it entirely. Dryers are another thing that are really helpful for hearing aids. And dryers used to be really, really common when, before rechargeable hearing aids really took hold um, because everyone had disposable batteries. You need a case to store it in at night. so what better case than a desiccant to help keep them dry? So you open up the battery doors and you put them maybe in a little dry box like this with a desiccant pack or something like this with your little desiccant beads that help suck out moisture while the hearing aids sit in there. Now, a lot of um, people choose to get rechargeable hearing aids, which is great. Some chargers are, do not have a drying aspect to them and some do. So the, this is an example of a Phonak uh, charger where the hearing aids are sitting in it and you can put in a desiccant pack. So when you close the lid, it helps keep them dry. And those desiccant packs last about six to 12 months typically. This is an example of a hearing aid charger made by Signia that also doubles as an electric dryer. So it has a, a fan in it that runs that while the hearing aids are in it, it keeps it dry at night. UV light dryers like the Perfect Lux dryer, which is pictured here, are also really nice to keep on hand since the UV light can help sanitize the hearing aids as well. Um, we have all of these styles of hearing aids at the HCC. Um, and if you don't have a dryer, I do recommend you look into one. Um, I see a question in the chat box. Does Oticon have a dryer? They do not. They have two styles of chargers. One is just an open dock that the hearing aid sits in without a cover. The other one does have a cover, but it doesn't have a drying component. It's um, just, it's portable, but not drying, unfortunately. So it can be a little bit tricky if you have rechargeable hearing aids and you want to be able to dry them, but they're also rechargeable. So you kind of have to navigate. Oh, I'll put them in the dryer maybe 30 minutes before I'm going to go to bed and then put them in the dryer for a 30 minute cycle and then transfer them to the charger before you go to sleep. Batteries can start to corrode your hearing aid and uh, lead to damage with rust from moisture exposure. Um, so if you take out your battery from your hearing aid to change it and you see some rust inside or evidence of corrosion, then it needs to be cleaned. So you can either schedule a cleaning with your audiologist or if you're an UNC HCC patient, then you can um, drop them off and we can clean them for you, um, usually while you wait. So you may be thinking to yourself now, with all the updates in technology, why aren't hearing aids waterproof? Why can't we just make them resistant to moisture and then we don't have to worry about it? Well, the companies are working on it. So pretty much every hearing aid has an IP68 rating, and this is the highest rating you can get for a consumer electronic, pretty much. Um, so an IP rating, um, the IP stands for ingress protection, so protection from 
particles getting inside. It's an international rating scale for dust and water resistance. So the first digit is a resistance to dust particles rating. Six is the highest rating you can have. So it's really fine particles of dust. The second digit represents resistance to freshwater liquid. Nine is the highest rating for that. An eight rating indicates resistance to a depth of about a meter and a half for 30 minutes or more. Um, so even if a, an electronic can resist to a greater depth of a, than to a greater depth than 1.5 meters, they they still give it an IP68 rating. So it could be more than that, but it'll still have the same rating. So pretty much all hearing aids have that rating. But it's important to keep in mind that these are tested under laboratory conditions and given that rating. So this is not a test five years after the electronic has its wear and tear. Um, so you wanna think about that the protective coatings on them do start to wear down over time. So even though they're quite water resistant at the beginning, when you first get them, things wear down. It's just, it's natural for them too. And especially something that lives on your body for possibly eight to 12 hours a day. Um, and also keep in mind that this IP rating doesn't usually take into account withstanding rain or a, a spraying liquid. So it's usually just a still liquid. Some of you may have heard about Phonak's new waterproof hearing aid. This came out a few months ago. Um, it's called the Audeo Life hearing aid. So I couldn't do a talk on hearing aids and active lifestyles without mentioning Phonax hearing aid. Um, it uses inductive charging, which is a contactless charging that's tested beyond the IP68 rating. So I'll talk more about that in just a second. So it's coated on the inside with perylene coating, and I hope I'm saying that right. And it's sealed, it has extra silicone sealing um, the microphones and the other components. It's important to note that while the hearing aid itself was determined to be waterproof up to 50 centimeters deep, the receivers or the earpieces are not waterproof. So they mention in their testing that if you're wearing these hearing aids while you're swimming, you still should not submerge your head. And it's because the receivers that are attached, they're designed to repel earwax with a little filter in the middle. And if you have Phonak hearing aids or Unitron hearing aids, you've probably seen this before, but water can still get in. Now, if it's tucked into your ear, if you're wearing it for maybe water aerobics, you're not going under the water, it's probably gonna be pretty safe, but you shouldn't submerge because water can get in here and cause the wire to break and then it'll need to be replaced, which is doable. It, that doesn't have to go into the manufacturer for repair, um, but it, that's an inconvenience that you probably don't wanna deal with. So the testing, how they determined that it is indeed a waterproof hearing aid. So they tested in fresh water, salt water, and pool water, and they tested in a little test chamber. So they pressurized this test chamber to simulate a depth of 50 centimeters, which is really only about a foot and a half. Um, and they raised the temperature to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. They did 520 cycles like this. So they did five minutes in this pressurized water. They drained the water and then they let this hearing aid sit in the humid air for another 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes was up, they took the hearing aid out and ran it through a test box to see if it was functioning to, to um, the ANSI standards that it should be functioning to. For the seawater, seven out of 10 of the hearing aids passed. And so after 520 cycles, they were still working. So of the three that failed in the seawater, one of them started working again after it was allowed to dry out. It was tested again and it was fully functional. 
For the pool water, nine of 10 hearing aids passed. And the one that failed, failed on the very last cycle. So even though that's only 10 or 20 hearing aids, that is, it's a pretty low number, but it's a high number of cycles. Um, and so this is really promising for the future of hearing aids. This is the first of its kind. We don't know yet how it's gonna hold up in real world conditions. Is this hearing aid still gonna be this waterproof, waterproof or water resistant five years from now? Um, that remains to be seen because it's only been out a few months so far, but it's promising. Most of the hearing aid manufacturers um, will probably come out with something similar to this in the years to come. When one manufacturer comes out with something new, usually the others catch up eventually. So what can we do at home to maintain our hearing aids and keep them dry and clean? Well, one thing that people always forget about is cleaning your microphones because they're little tiny crevices that pick up all the dust around you. So if you're out in Arizona and it's really dusty because you're in the desert, the microphones are picking up all that as well. So you wanna brush them off and they might be in different places. So usually they're around the buttons of a RIC or a BTE style hearing aid, or they're on the face plate of an in-the-ear hearing aid. So you take your little brush and just like a toothbrush motion and brush it off. So you don't wanna stick straight in the hole, but just a side to side. And that will usually get off the dust that's built up. You also want to avoid touching your hearing aids with dirty hands or right after you put on makeup or use hair products. And again, protect your hearing aids from these dusty or humid environments by using something like ear gear or a little sleeve that can cover and protect debris from getting into the microphones. So I have to talk about wax buildup when I talk about maintenance at home, because even though everyone gets wax, regardless of your lifestyle, this is the number one reason that a hearing aid stops working. So when we have people walk into our clinic every day and they might say, oh, my hearing aid stopped working all of a sudden, or it's cutting in and out, or they'll say, I can't tell if it's working. Sometimes people mistakenly think it's a battery issue and they'll say, oh, my hearing aid's not charging or it won't turn on. Actually, it is charged and it is turning on, but it's clogged with wax, so you can't hear any sound. And sometimes they'll say, I changed the battery, but it's still not working. So most hearing aids have a little filter on the end that needs to be changed. And if you've gotten your hearing aids um, from me, I've probably talked about this with you quite a bit. Um, because this is something that can be easy to forget um, how to do if you haven't done it in a long time. So there's usually a little tool and each manufacturer's tool is different to remove a filter that might be clogged with wax. And then there's a new one on the other side that you slide on once you've taken off the old one. Keep in mind that if you have a little dome on your hearing aid, you'll have to remove that first to get to the filter underneath. And so here's some examples of what the different wax guards or wax filter tools might look like. So a stick or a disc or a tab might be on the end here or on a custom hearing aid, it looks like that. Dryers, we've already talked about, but this is something you can do at home to help maintain your hearing aids. So when you're troubleshooting at home, I want you to do a couple different things. I want you to visually look at the hearing aid, and I also want you to do a listening check. And so when you're looking at the hearing aid, notice are there any blockages in the ear mold or in the tubing or in the wax guard? Are there, is there debris clogging the microphones? Are the wires broken? When you put it on the charger, are the lights coming on like they should be? And if you have it paired to your cell phone, if you open up your phone, is it connecting or not? 
And when you listen to the hearing aids, you can do this a couple different ways. If it's your own hearing aid, you should touch where the microphones are either on top of your ear or in your ear. And you should hear a little scratching sound. If it's someone else's hearing aid that you're trying to check, if you cup it in your hands, if sound is coming out, it'll start squealing. So we, we call that, make it sing. So listen for it to squeal or whistle. Or you can use a stethoset listener like this one here that you can find on Amazon, or we'd be happy to order one for you at the HCC, where if you're caring for someone else or have a spouse with hearing aids that you wanna check and see if they're working, this is a really quick and easy way to do it. I will caution you of doing this if you're checking someone's hearing aids who has a severe hearing loss, um, their hearing aid will be very loud. So don't blow your ears out <laughs> if you have better hearing. Fit and retention is really important when you're playing sports or you're doing act physical activity and you really wanna think about the comfort and the security of the hearing aid on your ear. So does it fit comfortably with your helmet? Is it protected from wind and sweat? Does it feel secure on your ear? So if you're playing tennis and you're running back and forth and your hearing aid flies off, we need to change that. <laughs> we need to change how it's fitting on the ear because you want it to stay on while you're doing your activity. And thinking about would an in-ear hearing aid or an over-the-ear hearing aid be better? You'll find on most blog posts who write about this topic that they usually recommend an in-the-ear hearing aid for physical activity because that can be better protected against moisture, wind. It's typically more secure in the ear as well. But that's not always the most appropriate style for people's hearing loss, especially if you have an age-related or a noise-induced hearing loss. Those people typically want a, a RIC style hearing aid um, just because the sound quality is a little more natural with that style. So when you're thinking about a hearing aid, you have to think about function versus um, the sound quality sometimes. So there's a couple different ways you can improve the retention of a hearing aid. One of those is by using a custom mold. So something that follows the curves of the ear and uses the folds to tuck in can help make it more secure on the ear. If you have a Rick style hearing aid with a dome, every company has this retention lock or I sometimes refer to it as a kickstand. So the earpiece with the dome tucks in the ear canal and then the kickstand sits down in the bowl of the ear to help hold it in. Otoclips can be used with either an over-the-ear hearing aid or with an in-the-ear hearing aid. With an in-the-ear hearing aid, it does need to have a little metal loop drilled on and attached to it so that you can attach the clasp. So that's something that the manufacturer does. Um, the clips clip to the back of the shirt so that if one pops off, say while you're kayaking, it's not gonna fall into the water. And a headband. I have um, a patient who plays volleyball. She uses ear suspenders, which are specifically made for um, hearing aids and cochlear implants. This is a picture of a cochlear implant to hold it in place and wear it. So while you're playing sports, you don't lose your hearing aid. This is just a regular Nike headband that this athlete is wearing to help him hold his cochlear implant in place. And other considerations for active lifestyles include reducing the perception of wind. So wind noise can be incredibly annoying and it's, it's a really tricky thing to mitigate with hearing aids. Hearing aids do have some built-in wind noise reduction, but anyone with hearing aids will tell you that it doesn't always work. Um, the wind noise reduction feature is usually only available in the top of the line models. Um, and it, it still doesn't always work, right? Because 
wind blows across the microphones on a hearing aid and it causes a pressure wave. And it's that pressure wave that causes the noise on the hearing aid. So it's really hard to prevent that um, when it's a hearing aid sitting on top of your ear. You can also use an ear gear protective cover or sleeve because that can help cover the microphones and protect them from that pressure wave of the wind. And then there are things like wind hoods that you can wear over your ears. So it protects from wind blowing across them, but it's porous so the sound waves are still getting to the hearing aid. And of course, battery life. If you like to go on hikes or take long trips and be unplugged for a period of time, is your hearing aid rechargeable? Because eventually if you wanna use it, it's, you're gonna have to charge it. So what's the expected battery life from your hearing aid on a single charge? The manufacturers vary drastically. Some of them are 12 to 15 hours. Some of them are as high as 37 hours on a single charge. Do you have a charger that is portable or does it have to be plugged into the wall to use, to be used? And if you're taking a really long trip, you might want a power bank where you can plug your charger into this and this will give you some extra battery life. And if you're someone that takes long trips and does long hikes already, you probably already own some of these. If you have a hearing aid that uses disposable batteries, you wanna make sure to take extra batteries with you. So in summary, we wanna take steps to prevent moisture related damage so that we're not having to send hearing aids for repair quite so often. So you can use covers or sleeves to cover your hearing aids or a hearing aid dryer when exposure to moisture is unavoidable. So I wanna note, don't use a hair dryer and don't put your hearing aids in the microwave because people have done that in the past and destroyed their hearing aids. So only use hearing aid dryers. And ultimately, electronics tend to break down over time. And just know that we can't prevent that entirely, um, but we'll try to mitigate how many repairs are needed over the lifetime of you owning your hearing aid. And your hearing aid should be professionally cleaned every six to 12 months, and that helps prevent excessive buildup, and it can help catch problems before their problems. You should check the fit of your hearing aids. If they feel loose, if they're falling out, if you take your mask off and it flies off every time, talk to your audiologist for advice on improving retention. And finally, the development of a waterproof hearing aid is promising, uh, but it remains to be seen how it's gonna last in real world conditions over time. So at this point, I'm going to end the recording for our YouTube viewers, and I will take questions from our live guests.